Hello, this is David D. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science. Something your university professors won't tell you, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly those science evangelists won't tell you. And they certainly won't talk about this in this way, and that is this article that came out today. And it says, 1.7 billion year old chunk of North America found in Australia. Now, you know we're going to be talking about uh, plate tectonics, and you know the mass media and mainstream science, they all say the same thing. Plate tectonics, Pangea, everything on one side, lopsided Earth, oh, it's a weird thing concept but that's the one they go with we're going to take a look at what they're saying here and show you that here is actual evidence that is much more in line with expansion tectonics than it is with plate tectonics let's take a look at this this video i believe is from uh, this article is from usa today and the video is from the weather channel i believe yes that's what it says we're going to take a look at it i'm going to keep it silent because really there's no nothing there but there is something they say but i want you to pay attention to the the play the uh, continents and which way they're moving okay because pangea they all sort of come together and they got a big problem of where australia is and where it where it should be if it's if if you have it a chunk of it in North America. Okay, let's take a look at it. There it goes. It's saying, a peek into the Earth's past shows an unrecognizable planet. I guess this is this chunk of land that's going to be found both. Researchers in Northern Australia found that rocks that match ones that they found in Canada. Now I want you to look here, right there. Right there, see it? There's Australia, there's South America, and North America's way over here that's where it is of course then they immediately jump away from that hmm that's interesting so let's see creating creating what now is present day australia that is oh okay there's a piece of it it's somehow was together it says rocks recently discovered in australia bear striking similarities though found in north america study finds and it says roughly uh, 250 miles of the camera. Blah, 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 it talks about it. Here we go. It says one, uh, once attached to North America, but broke away 1.7 billion years ago. It's 1.7 billion year old rocks. Mm, that's interesting because what they can do, you can see a little things, things that are going on here. 1.7 billion, so a long time ago, way before Pangea. And then they say around uh, the research determined that, okay, there was a supercontinent, say Nuna. I'm sorry I laugh at because really this is all based uh, no fans it's on based on fairy tale and, and all that and and really it's just a bad model the amount of plate tectonics and having with a fixed radius folks it ain't it uh, doesn't work I'm sorry that's my own bias but let's keep going here it says that um, this noon of the supercontinent uh, um, drifting <laughs> after drifting around for some hundred million years <laughs> I don't know what they think. I don't know what they're thinking about this, just drifting around. There's processes in order to the universe. It just doesn't drift around. Not even out in space. Things, there's gravity, and gravity causes things to move in ways that are just drifted around, around for 100 million years. The chunk eventually crashed into what's now Australia. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. I mean, look at the picture they're painting. They're saying that 1.7 billion years ago, which, according to their model, is is really almost impossible. If you ever look up plate tectonics, see far, how far they go back, and see how it just doesn't make sense. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. And we're going to take a look at an explanation of expansion tectonics that any child can see. But anyways, let's go forward. It says, um, Nuna broke apart about 300 million years ago, and that chunk of land did not drift away. Instead, it became a new piece of a real real estate permanently stuck to australia sort of like the india that goes supposedly flying up there but it really doesn't so that's their story and you but we're, we're going to take a look at neil adams here one of my favorite people who uh introduced me to expansion tectonics actually and um we'll take a look now this is what they are saying what happens in pangea what happens if you go back in time australia goes in this direction it goes off to our left and all these continents go to all the right and they meet somewhere in the middle these do not come together in plate tectonics what they're saying is it's floating around somewhere and a piece got stuck to it and then it, i mean it's i don't know how more contrived that kind of explanation is now that's their explanation that's what they write down now when you read that it's like 
Seriously, I'm not sure there's anybody who reads that that really would understand it and say, oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. They can, no, no. Okay, let's, especially if they know expansion tectonics. Let's see what expansion tectonics has to do. And I've turned off the sound on this because I'm, I want you to take a look at the video and I'll, I'll describe because he's talking about expansion tectonics in general. Uh, 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 Neil Adams, sorry. And he's showing like the lines there saying uh, these stretch lines. Now, this is what I want you to see. This is the world going back in time, as Neil Adams says. You can see this, the earth. If you watch the stars behind it, you can see it's getting smaller. And he's taking away the seafloor bed, you know, 10 million at a time, you know, a couple million um, years at a time. And you see everything's closing up. That's what expansion tectonics says, that the continent you see is India is not crashing anywhere. It's just sitting there. Now, look at where Australia is going. This is following the tectonic plates. I mean, the C4 bed. Where is it going? It's not making Pangaea all on one side. It's going to a very specific place where it fits in beautifully and like a puzzle piece. And that's where I'm going to stop this. And that is... Right here it comes around. There's Australia again attached to it, and we will stop right there. Expansion tectonics basically taking away the seafloor bed according to its age, and it all fits together. The possible possible the probability of that is e enormous. There's a guy who has a Facebook page that he tried to calculate that, and it's like 96 quintillion, quintillion, quadrillion to one or something that this would happen. But let's Regardless, let's look at what expansion tectonics says going back a couple hundred million years. There is Antarctica. There's Australia, pretty much the same way it looks. There's the northern part of Australia. Here, what's this? Oh, this is Mexico. This is Baja. This is California. There's Oregon and Washington. And what's this? It's Canada. And what's this? Australia. He didn't put it there because he thought it was cute. He took away the seafloor bed, the newest first, then the second newest, then the third newest, all the way down, let the ball of the earth crunch down, and lo and behold, what does it say? It says that Australia was next to North American Canada. So this idea that, good day, mate, 1.7 billion year old chunk of North America found in Australia, their explanation is 1.7 billion years ago where we really have no idea where all the continents are and we call one noon and we really have no idea. And if you look on the internet and look at our maps and our animations, we don't have the clean animations that you saw of expansion tectonics. They're just willy-nilly and we'll go float around for 100 million years and a piece of gear stuck to it and stuck, moved by on its own, I guess, and left some in Canada and stuck to Australia and then I guess took a ride on Australia. Maybe it's like a surfboard. I mean, and then look at the explanation we have in expansion tectonics. I mean, it is night and day, folks. Like I say, don't take my word for it. Don't take my word or anybody else's on faith. Study this. Look at it yourself. This is a perfect example. This is a, an article coming out today, January 23rd, 2018, when I'm making this video. And we critical thinkers, this is how we see it. And to us... This is proof for expansion tectonics and really showing that the other model is way inferior. Remember, stay critical, stay thinking. I'm Dave DeHilster. I'm your science therapist. That's what I'm here for, to teach you how to do this. And hopefully you'll do it on your own. But you'll, you'll always need me. Why? Because I'm going to be one step ahead. I've been doing it for 20 years. And remember, subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Click on the subscribe button, the little bell right next to it, so that you can get alerted when Dissident Science and myself come out and tell you some more things that you aren't going to hear anywhere else on YouTube or the inner. Ciao for now.